So I kind of see technology like a superpower and you have to, with great power comes, comes responsibility. So I think that as long as, it, you know, technology is amazing, but it, it, you know, if it gets into the wrong hands, then it immediately becomes something that, that could be a, a huge threat, a huge threat to democracy. Um, so I think it's going to be a case of citizens remaining really vigilant and being really engaged on the topic to make sure that their civil rights and freedoms are protected. Um, but, you know, but also embracing and realizing the potential of democracy, uh, sorry, also realizing the potential of technology to uh, deliver us information and and to really empower us um, as as world citizens. Technology in and of itself isn't good or bad. It's 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 what you do with it. It's it's how it's used. The technology of the future, as I see it, could be bad for democracy in the sense that, you know, in the wrong hands uh, or if information or technology starts to be filtered, uh, it could be it could be very dangerous. Um, if you think about sort of Nazi propaganda and, and you think about the channeling of, of, of information like that, uh, you know, there are lots of examples about how that could be could be really dangerous. Uh, I also think it could be bad from the perspective of privacy. Um, you know, just for me personally, the fact that everyone in the world essentially carries a camera with them all the time has really changed, you know, my life. And it's interesting because fans will ask me, you know, can we do a selfie or can we do a picture? And I will really want to, but because location services are attached to photographs, within seconds, everyone in the world can know exactly where I am down to like, you know, you know, my square foot within an airport or something, which is, which is kind of mind boggling. And uh, it was, it was one of the things that we explored in a movie that I did called The Bling Ring, which was that essentially this group of kids were able to use technology. They were able to use um, Street View on Google Maps to figure out which window they could get into to break into someone's house. And because there was so much information about where these celebrities were in the world, uh, they, were, they were literally able to plan their robberies when they knew the celebrities were out of the country and figure out exactly which window they could go into in their house and where they live in order to be able to do it. And so that's a really good example of like, you know, wow, how do we protect our privacy in those circumstances? How do you, uh, you know, that was too much information was out there basically. Um, so it's really interesting. And I, I try to kind of explain this to fans, which is like when I'm not working, I wanna be able to move around as freely as I can and to, and to draw as little, little attention to myself as possible. And technology makes that difficult. It's very easy to, to track me, potentially. Um, and what's really interesting now is that whether you're a celebrity or not, that problem is actually very relatable. I think um, a lot of my friends that I speak to are very concerned about the fact that, you know, wow, I feel like I'm being spied on. Like Facebook knows exactly which adverts to show me because they can see what I've clicked on in the past or, you know, wow, like Facebook, has access to all of the contacts in my in my book in my phone book or um you know it's 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 very we give away so much information about ourselves very freely um particularly as a generation as a as as a millennial um but we don't think about what the consequences of that might be and how much power that 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 puts how much power we're giving to someone else so um you know it's a really it's a really interesting debate and, you know, but I think, I mean, I think it's one of the reasons why I was so vocal during the Leveson inquiry uh, in England, which was this big kind of inquest into the fact that the media had hacked into answer phone machines of, you know, various different English people and had used the information in, in various different ways. And, you know, I, I think protecting people's privacy like that is incredibly important and I will always be very vocal on the subject um, 
So uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's a right. I think it's a pillar of democracy. Privacy is a pillar of democracy too. So another way that I see this happening is that uh, I recently watched Misrepresentation. It's an amazing documentary. If you haven't seen it, find time to watch it. Um, but what it points out is that our media, com- you know, our media is essentially controlled by a very very small number of people at the top uh you know most of which are men and so the kind of information that we receive the kind of ideas that we receive about women and and men and you know it is only coming from a one gendered perspective um or it's you know filtered down from the top from from one perspective and you know i think sexism in the media is a, is a huge is a huge issue and especially for the young women reading it, it can really affect their self-esteem, how they view themselves, how they see themselves in the world. It can have huge, huge, huge knock-on effects and impacts. So, um, you know, that's an example of uh, technology potentially, you know, with too much power placed into a very small number of people's hands, it is potentially really dangerous. I think that technology can be amazing for democracy. Um, we've seen just recently in the last five years, I would say that uh, citizens are able to record events that are happening around them and, and as such provide evidence of, of atrocities that are happening all over the world. And that's very powerful because it allows everyone to be an active bystander. It allows you know, us to have real insight really into into things which are going on you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles away from us uh which is incredible um and certainly with my un work uh being able to provide information to spread um ideas through social media and technology is immensely powerful um so i think those are examples of how i think it's really good really good for democracy. I also really like how technology has kind of democratized who gets a voice and who doesn't. In the sense that, you know, I'm very privileged. I I have a kind of a platform as a result of having been in film. Um, but, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, not everyone would have had a forum or a platform within which to share their opinions or, or share their voice. And, you know, I use Instagram and all of my friends use Instagram. And that to me feels like, and we all have the same playing field with which to do that. So that, that feels really good. Um, the other thing that's great about it is, <laughs> from a very selfish perspective, I guess, is that when things are written in the media, I, it essentially provides me with a right to reply. So maybe 10 years ago, something could have been written and I would have quite a difficult time of sort of finding an opportunity in which I could discuss, you know, the fact that I'm not carrying Prince Harry's unborn baby or <laughs> unborn child or that I'm, um, or that I'm not, whatever crazy thing is being written. Um, you know, and it gives me an opportunity to kind of stop things before they get too out of control. I tend not to try and comment too much on on what is being said or or discussed about me, but when I'm getting calls from my grandma, I know it's time that I have to I have to step in and, and set things straight. It's usually the call from my grandma that tells me that okay, I should probably say something about this now. Um, so yeah, and I think that's very empowering. So um, it gives it gives everyone an equal chance to to be heard um which is which is a good thing <laughs>